Yo, long time no see. I'm just going to be going over these sort of light streak abstract. I don't know how to describe them, but these. Step one, uh, I find it's best to make a black background. So I'll just press Control I to invert this white into black. And we've got better canvas to start off with. We're going to start off, because this is completely from scratch and we're not using any images, no stocks, no nothing. We need to make what we're working on. And for that, we use the text tool. So you just type out any text, I'm going to just type smear, make it red. Really doesn't matter. Um, you can do anything at this point, but it's just so we have something to work off of. So once you have the text, um, rasterize it by right clicking rasterize, obviously. And then go to filter, blur, and motion blur. And I've already got it preset, but you want the angle to be zero or basically one of the right angles. So either zero, 90, or minus 90. So either of yeah, one of the right angles anyway. So I'm going to set it to zero. You just want to make it blurred enough so that you can't really recognize the text anymore. This is just to get some sort of lines to start off with, so it's not too important. But like this much should do. And then click OK. And I mean, you're halfway there already. The next step is to go Control T to transform, uh, the free transform. Right click, go to warp. Basically, this is where you choose what you want to do, like how you want it to look, what colors and stuff. So I'm going to press enter and make a duplicate just so I have a backup. I'm going to uh, go through how to do two different colors. Um, but yeah, anyway, control T, right click, warp, and then use these corners to sort of, sort of like just make weird shapes, like overlap them in weird ways like this. And then as you'll see, when you press enter, it will update and then everything will overlap like that. So it has that nice sort of light streak effect. And for the second color, I'm going to alt and drag this layer up above and I'm going to change the color with a color overlay to sort of a yellowy orange so it sort of match it matches up with the red but you can also tell the difference between the yellow and the red and now I want this to be its own layer without the color overlay so to do that I'm going to reset the layer by making a new layer and control click in both of them highlight both of them and control E to merge them so now it's got the yellow color but it has no layer style on it so we can go ahead and Control T, warp, and then make another one. Just like a weird, weird one like that, maybe. There you go. And then you can go ahead and edit this one individually from the red. So maybe make it wider that way, or turn it round, or you can do whatever you want, really. But that's the main process, just make some text, blur it so you get them light streaks starting to show through. And then use the warp to sort of make these weird things. I'm actually going to delete this and redo it because I didn't like how it turned out. That's the main thing, you can't really tell how it's going to look until you press enter. So I'm just repeating all these steps again, I'll go through that. So, colour overlay on the backup layer to make it yellow. New layer, control click it, command E or control E, depending on what you're using. Uh, so now it's its own layer with a yellow colour on it. And then warp. And. You know, just random stuff. I'm trying to fill the areas that are that have the least amount of red in with the yellow. I feel like that works better because if they overlap too much, then you just sort of get sort of weird meshes of colour. So once you have something like this. Uh, something that you're happy with. I'm not happy with this, but for the, for the sake of the tutorial it's going to work. You can go ahead and add more adjustments on top. So for example, you can add curves to sort of make it brighter, make it more contrasted maybe. You can always add a colour overlay again if you want to change the colour, so maybe one or more. And because they're quite thick, both of them, like they don't have many pockets of where they're transparent, it sort of looks like the blue slapped on top of the red. So for that, I'm going to reset the blue layer again by making a new layer above it. Control click in both of them and Control E to merge them. And then I'm going to go to normal and set it to screen. So now where they overlap, the, their colors sort of combine instead of the blue just overlapping on the red. And you can go ahead and sort of experiment with any of these um, layer styles. And this will depend on the background as well. This will, because if you have a black background and you set it to multiply, it's going to disappear where the black is. So I'll just go with screen, it's the safest, safest option, I think. If you try and add a color overlay, um, while it's on screen, the color overlay will sort of override the um, the blending mode and it will just sort of paste on top. 
So if you add, if you are adding color overlay, add the color overlay first, reset the layer, and then add it to screen afterwards. Make sure screen is the last thing you do. Then you can always maybe even gradient map if you want to test the colors this way. So once you know how to get that sort of light streak effect with the text and the warp, it's sort of easy from that point. There you go. Looks pretty bad, but you get the idea. You can make some really cool stuff. I'll show some examples of stuff I took more time on. Then you can always make it bigger. If you do want to make it bigger, um, if you press enter, you will see that there is some pixelation to it. So that's why working on a big canvas first is a good idea. But if you make them bigger, you can get some cool, I don't know, wallpapers or stocks for headers maybe. It's just about what you want to use it for really. That's it, pretty easy. Let me know what you make out of it. Hopefully it helps. Let me know if you need any help. I do go quite quickly, but obviously, I assume you know how to use Photoshop before you watch one of these videos. If you do watch the live streams, I now stream on Twitch. Um, I didn't mention that, but I'm mentioning it now. So there's my Twitch on the screen now. Follow it up. Thanks for watching and peace.